I decided recently to swap out the group set on my gravel bike for a real gravel group set. And it's not like what was on there was bad. In fact, it's pretty darn good. It's an R8000 series uh, Altegra Di2. And I never used the bike as much as I thought I was going to. And in fact, I thought I was going to do some upgrades to it. So I got it as a group set and I thought I was going to put smaller chain rings on the front and an RX derailleur with a clutch on the back. But even though like I chose everything on it, it never really felt right to me. Something felt off. And in order to figure that out, I kind of have to go back to my roots where I began. And I started with road cycling with, well, technically with like Shimano Sora. And then I moved very quickly to SRAM Rival, and SRAM Rival uses a double tap system. And I frankly really liked it. Now over the years, especially working in industry, I got to try basically everything. Uh, until the last couple of years, those things are about the only things that I haven't tried everything in. Um, but I tr got to try everything, and especially at Campagnolo, I got to try everything on under the Campagnolo brand, and that includes three types of shifting, which is power shift on their lower end stuff, um, ultra shift, which was part of their higher end stuff, which has features no one has quite matched, electronic or mechanical, and of course on most of my bikes is electronic power shift. When I switched to Rival, people would mention the wobbly brake lever of Shimano, and I, still an amateur at this, I, I really hadn't thought about it or noticed it. But over the years of trying everything, I, I realized I really hate the wobbly brake levers of Shimano Mechanical. Like, really, really hate it. SRAM doesn't do it, and Campagnolo doesn't do it. So, fine. But that shouldn't be a big deal for, for me because DI2 doesn't have wobbly brake levers. They have two buttons on them. Two buttons that feel like bargain basement engineering? Like for what should be their second to top, which actually feels exactly the same as their top, it really feels chintzy. It really feels cheap. And I made a whole entire video about this when I was developing the buttons for Commander because I had learned that in order to make a premium product, it has to have premium feel. And at Campagnolo, they spent a lot of time and effort making sure it feels premium. Someone should have sent the memo to Shimano. I mean, at, at, at this point, I've spent more time and effort engineering actual functional power meters that work on Shimano cranksets, as well as engineering button feel, than it seems that Shimano has done in like three or four generations of products. That's strange. If we rewind to, I think around the mid 2000s, prior to Ant and Ant Plus and Shimano's proprietary thing that I reverse engineered. Well, Shimano released something called Flight Deck with, I think, and the Altegra 6500. And if you look up Flight Deck, you will find Shimano stuff, but I don't think people are presenting it correctly. What they think Flight Deck was, was the shifters. And I've seen many modern YouTubers talk about flight deck shifters. I don't think that's what flight deck was. I'm pretty sure that flight deck was the branding that was used because in any flight deck listed shifter, and there was many of them, they have doors that you can open. And if you open the door, you don't, you, you see part of the gear system, but you could actually plug in a little sensor that ran out on a wire to a mount for a cycle computer, one in each shifter. They also ran down to speed and cadence sensors, and that was for Shimano's proprietary cycle computer. Now, these are not like modern ones. They barely give you any information, but these ones could give you what gear you were in. And modern group sets, modern electronic group sets, they do the same. Modern mechanical group sets do not. At the time, I think afterwards, I'm not sure who was first, but I can almost guarantee that Shimano's flight deck was first because Campagnolo launched Ergo Brain, which you can barely find, but it's still sort of 
you can find remnants of it. And they plugged into the back of Ultra Shift shifters, which, except for adding more gears, the mechanism is basically the same. So it'd be interesting to actually try and use one of these sensors. Now, those Euro brains were probably hard coded for however many gears at the time. So you, you probably wouldn't get 12 and 13 gears now, but it's just kind of interesting. So fast forward a few years where unfortunately now a bunch of smooth brains think that wireless shifting is innovation, not just a money saving method. Well, no one seems to have tried to resurrect this idea of putting sensors in mechanical group sets. Like we've hit this point where we have miniaturized and, and decreased the power consumption to such a tiny level for hull and hull like sensors. We, we don't need these bad potentiometers or, or wiper switches. They're all gone and we can make ultra reliable contactless sensors in these things but nobody seems to have tried it again. Now, that may be perfectly fine because maybe the market has spoken and in the electronic uh, realm, or I should say in the road bike realm, it's electronics and it's going to be electronics and mechanical is dead. Mechanical is going to be the entry level domain and those people don't buy high end electronics, so who cares? But it still feels like it leaves me wanting for something, for a solution for my gravel bike. Excuse me. In case you haven't figured out what I'm probably putting on my gravel bike, it's Campagnolo Ecker, which I bought the same day that Ecker GT was announced for the same price as Ecker GT was announced. Don't really fully understand that, but that's fine. And so I have the group set. Um, I still haven't put it on the bike, but I did think about, well, I have all this leftover commander tech. Why don't I look at making a sensor? So when I opened up the Zwift steerer or the lead steerer for use with Zwift, I noticed a TLV 493, I think that's the number, uh, sensor. And this is a three axis magnetic sensor, not a magnetometer, it, it needs slightly stronger magnetic fields. And so using two of the axis, you can determine, you know, which way it's pointed, which way a magnet is pointed that's rotating above it. And that's exactly how Zwift did it. Except you can't put a magnet inside it the, normally you would have the magnet above it and then the field lines go through the magnetic sensor. So you have the north and south and they, they all come out and they all kind of come back around. And around a cylindric magnet, you, you get fairly straight field lines that match up with the length of it. Now, that's how I tested it. I just shoved one of those magnets on the back of a uh, little screw so I could hold it there and I rotated it around. and. It's zero, and you can see if I go a little further one way, it jumps over to the positive. So here would be about half pi. This one will be negative half pi. So we're getting our angle out. Using the reference code for that I found in some Arduino library, I got good results. But the Ultra Shift Shifter is a little more finicky and it has a metal bolt in it. What I thought is if I have a two little cylinder manning this, one pointing up and one pointing down, the field line will actually go straight above and then down into it. And I've seen stuff like this work before. Like if I had the two and it was north, south like this, they would go create a field straight. And if you could put that directly over or through that sensor, it would work great. But I don't really have the room for that ish. So I can actually maybe make that one work. Um, but I needed to test it. And so I took the dev board and I had the magnets taped onto um, the back of the ultra shift mechanism. I shoved it in there and I tried to hold it steady and I shifted it through the gears and using the reference code, which isn't great, but it was good enough to test if this idea works. I was able to get good reliable data out of it. 
until I would move the board or something um, a little off axis. So alignment is important with this and magnet positioning. Um, while the rotational position, uh, we can calibrate out how they're aligned <laughs> is a little important. And it's proven to me that, yeah, this is really, really easy to implement. I don't know why no one has done it. So that's given me a few new thoughts. Inside the Ultra Shift housing, I don't think I could fit a battery and all the electronics and a transmitter, especially where there's probably carbon fiber in this nylon or at least glass fiber and a lot of carbon black. It makes transmitting a, a little more difficult. So I'm kind of left with the original ErgoBrain design, which is put a sensor in there and run a wire out. And I mean, I have all the leftover commander parts, or I should say some of the leftover commander parts, or I could just redesign something very similar and reuse the code. The question is, do I want to? Now, obviously, as I've said in, in previous videos and my EPX project, I'm not doing anything commercially, especially not direct to customers. But I am curious what other people's feel of the cycling industry is. And so that's my ask is, do you think mechanical is dead? Like in, in the high end, is it dead in road bikes? Will it survive in gravel? Um, and is there a need for this? I, I very much think that we should have been seeing stronger integration between electronic group sets and things like Zwift and Trainer Road. But it hasn't caught on, and we're left with, you know, my defunct commander project, and we're left with goofy B-grade Xbox controllers. So uh, feel free to leave a comment because I am genuinely interested in what people think is happening longer term with mechanical group sets. And will we explore putting some electronic brains in them at some point? With that, hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching.